All right, welcome everybody. I'm Philip J. Watt, and this is a short video on the 10 ch top choices that every single human has in this current day and age. In fact, it's always applicable, no matter what era, no matter where in the history or the timeline. However, it's especially prominent right now because we are so divided. There's so much infighting, so much abuse, so much domestic violence online that people treat each other like absolute crap when uh, we really need to be looking at how we're going to move forward as a team to actually create a better future for ourselves and our children because that's what we have, strength in numbers. We can literally choose our future and we are literally choosing our future and at the moment we're not choosing such a great one. So these top 10 choices will help you sort of ascertain within yourself how you're behaving and the more of us that choose the right path the more of us will be able to come together to actually create an honorable future that we can be really proud to leave to our children. So before I do that, if you're not familiar with me, if you're new here, my, um, again, my name is Philip J. Watt. I'm a hypnopsychotherapist. You can see my website, healbyhypnosis.com. If you're interested in dealing with any health or well-being issue that you might have, I'm also a journalist, a author, and a public speaker, mediator, many different types of roles. Essentially, I've been writing for many, many years around sort of spirituality or, or philosophy. Um, I don't want to use terms that are going to push you off, but essentially honoring connection with connection is my simple definition of that. Um, but also personal development, how to help yourself uh, and therefore help others, as well as societal growth, what's going on in our system and what are the potential solutions to the problems in the system. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, lots of infighting, division, abuse towards each other. What are you doing? <laughs> like, show some honor, show some respect. We're all at a, at a certain stage of development. Just imagine if people were treating us really poorly because we had an ignorant or arrogant point of view, which we all have had at some stage, and I'm sure we all do at this stage as well. So do you think really abusing each other is going to facilitate learning? Or do you think people get their defense mechanism, mechanisms up and they, you know, go put them in a corner, they'll fight like uh, wild animals? Of course no learning happens when you start uh, treating each other like that. Just use a mediation type a process of delivering information in gentle ways that is going to help people to learn, maximize the chance they will learn, um, especially, you know, you, because you might not actually be right for starters. So if we start talking with each other with a little bit more respect with each other, we might all start learning. So that's really, really important. I want to remind you again that we, you are, it is guaranteed you are wrong about stuff right now. You've been wrong in the past, you're wrong right now, and you'll be wrong in the future. So how cognitively dissonant are you? How open are you to receiving new information and evolving your beliefs because of it? Or how closed are you? How automatically do you reject information because you're fighting to, you know, to hold on to those belief systems because it's an identity crisis, an existential crisis or whatnot, and you're pretty much uh, stagnant like a disease pool of water. Big question. So let's get on to the top 10 choices every human has right now. Consider yourself notified. You have now heard this information or soon will. So as you move forward, you now know this information. You need to apply it in terms of being an honorable, coherent um, advanced version of yourself. So number one, honor or disrespect? How do you treat people? How do you treat yourself? Is it with honor or disrespect? Choose one and go for it. You know, show a little bit of bloody integrity with yourself, for, for yourself, and radiate that to others. It's a good thing for the world. Number two, consistency or hypocrisy? Are you a, a hypocrite on on very large levels. I mean, we're all hypocrite, right? We've all got hypocrisies. We all have inner contradictions. That's fine. We just need to accept that and notice it when we're doing behaving like that and then fix it. That's how you learn and grow, you know? Uh, but if we're sort of pretending like those hypocrisies don't exist and rejecting them and suppressing them, then, well, we're that stagnant disease pool of water again, aren't we? Uh, number three, free speech versus censorship. Now, of course, we don't want to see speech that is inciting violence towards others as criminal uh, and ethical consequences to that. However, everybody should be more or less able to say what they bloody want. It's really important. They might be right, they might be wrong. Who cares? If you don't want to listen to it, don't listen to it. But it's super integral that we have 
platforms online and people you know in this world accept that it's absolutely okay for people to have differences in beliefs okay that's how we all sort of that's civil hopefully it's done in civil discourse a lot of it isn't being done like that however um it's really important to have that ongoing dialogue because then we don't we we don't learn if we don't so number four truth or lies how much do you honor the truth? How much do you honor new information, as I mentioned? How much do you integrate that new, new information? Or do you continue to just perpetuate lies, deception, darkness, all the, uh, the crap that comes with with inaccuracy? Ignorance is not bliss, guys. You know, it's, it's a fallacy. It's a, it's a false paradigm uh, because the truth shall set you free. It can be a little bit daunting, can be a little bit difficult, Sure, and that's fine. But we need to emotionally sophisticate ourselves uh, to experience new truths in a way that is actually healthy for our souls and those around us. Number five, freedom or enslavement. A lot of people think that enslavement doesn't exist, but let me tell you, debt enslavement. The banks and the uh, those international banking cartels have been very smart. They've enslaved us on a debt level. But then there's also ideological enslavement. So political ideology, sociological ideology, religious ideology, you know, are you brainwashed in terms of having to believe in a particular series of beliefs or do you rise above it and go, well, I'll just pick and, uh, and match things that sort of resonate with me and have a, have a sort of intelligent sort of amalgamation of all the information instead? And do you freely choose how you believe or you uh, suck it into particular channels of, of thought? and systems of belief. Big, big one. And also, don't forget all the human trafficking, sex trafficking, child trafficking, women trafficking. It literally exists on a large scale in our world. We need to accept that. It's a very, very sad set of affairs. Once we start talking about it more on a collective level, we'll be able to resolve it. Number six, do you choose wisdom and intelligence or foolishness? So do you continuously perpetuate lies and dogma and inaccuracy? Or are you open to having health when it comes to your intellect and translating information knowledge into wise practice? Big, big questions. Very, very difficult in some cases and very easy in others. Um, number seven, empowerment or centralization. Essentially, this can be said another way, decentralization versus centralization. So do we continue on the path that we're collectively going right now, which is national and international centralization and totalitarianism? Basically, very, very rich people, multi-billion, maybe even trillionaires, sitting in their ivory tower, dictating to the world and the nations how we operate, how we live, think, feel and behave? Or do we take the other path, which is maybe a more wise one, um, that is about decentralization, relocalization, re-empowerment of communities and re-empowerment of individuals in those communities. That's pretty much the crux, the major issue that we face collectively right now. How are we going to move forward? Well, it's going to be up to us because the people have the power. We're choosing to allow that path to occur right now. Number eight, do you live or do you die? And this is sort of a metaphorical one. So do you continuously grow? Do you open yourself and expand yourself and advance yourself, empower yourself? Or do you um, stagnate like that disease pool of water? Do you reject growth and, and is change really hard for you? Essentially, living is that expansion process and dying is that um, that these expansion no there's one word for it i'm sure but basically being stagnant or going backwards just retreating uh and dying so big big questions number nine love do you choose love or do you choose fear or hatred now of course there's nothing wrong with you know, fear is a natural emotion it's part of the uh, emotional infrastructure no problem with that whatsoever however just in general how do you treat yourself how do you treat your family your friends strangers the bloody environment the whole lot do you do it with a loving, nurturing, caring attitude or are you in competition and resentment and jealousy and condemnation? Because uh, you're literally abusing yourself. And the reason why you're abusing yourself if you take that path is because, number 10, do you choose unity or division? Now, of course, we are all separate beings we have individual experiences and that's there's nothing absolutely wrong with that however 
we are unified at our core on many different levels. We could look at just ecology, so the bees and the plants and the planet and the solar system and the cosmos, etc., etc. We're all part of a, of a interrelated system. We can also look at it quantum physically, that we are particles and are entangled at, a, at that level. We are intimately connected with each other, very much so. Um, but we also have the uh, the, pa the power to unite as a people to determine with some intellect and some wisdom about how we create our future. What are we leaving behind? Are we going to be proud of what we leave behind for our children? Or are we going to go further the path we seem to be going now, which is you know complete erosion of so much of what sort of made us, which makes us so amazing. You know, so on an individual and a collective level, we need, really need to think about these things. It is so, so important. And that's why when you treat others with, though, with love and, and honor and respect and all those things, that because we're intimately connected with them, uh, we are literally treating ourselves like that. So we need to rise above a lot of this stuff, guys and girls. We've got a lot of work to do on an individual and a collective level. Where we all need to learn and grow. No one is perfect. No one has been, you know, achieved amazing enlightenment and all these sort of uh, other metaphysical sort of constructs that uh, we can get a little bit confused by. We are all on a journey of growth, and I really wish you the very best in it. Thanks for listening. See you next time.